As we were planning the switch from the travel trailer to the fifth wheel, one of the big things that was giving me a boatload of anxiety was figuring out which fifth wheel hitch to get. There are a lot of options out there. So the real beauty and benefit of an automatic sliding hitch is that as you turn, it's gonna automatically push this cap of the fifth wheel backwards. That was actually pretty smooth. Not, right? too, not too bad. Well, I know that one of my flaws is the brakes and the gas on this can be a little jumpy. Yes. So I know that one smooth motion was going to be a challenge for me. I knew that as soon as you said it. And your 1,050 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was supposed to help you with the heavy lifting, Nick. Don't worry, I got him on that one. <laughs> she was probably tougher anyway. So. <laughs> In today's video, I'll go over what we got, why, how it's been going for the past 5,000 miles, and also some of the other options we considered. Okay, first off, we ended up going with the Polrite Super Glide Fully Automatic Sliding Hitch. Our exact model was the 2714, which is for the OEM Ford Puck System. Now we got that Puck System put in aftermarket from a Ford dealership, and it actually ended up being cheaper than doing the Universal Rails. Polrite also makes the hitch for the Universal Rail System, but I definitely preferred the option of going with the OEM Puck style. Now our tow vehicle is a 21 Ford F350 single rear wheel, four door with the short bed. And that combination right there is kind of why it was such a big ordeal to finally come to the Polrite Super Glide as our hitch decision. Now, if we had an eight foot bed pickup, I wouldn't really even be looking at sliding hitches. And if we had a dually with more payload, I wouldn't have even been concerned about the weight of an auto sliding hitch. My wife and I are full-time RVers since 2019. We run an online fitness and nutrition business as well as being RV lifestyle and travel YouTubers. So part of that is working with businesses that align with our needs and our beliefs to help share some of these products into the RV lifestyle. After weeks and weeks of researching this and trying to decide which fifth wheel hitch would fit us best, I finally decided on the automatic sliding fifth wheel hitch. And after watching countless hours of YouTube videos, I ended up reaching out to Nick, the hitch guy from Polright, to see if he wanted to partner with us on our brand new fifth wheel. And I'm really glad they said yes, because the last four months and 5,000 miles of towing have been pretty stress-free. Now being full-time, we have hitched and unhitched dozens of times. landing and I feel like we have a pretty good grasp of the pros and cons to share with you guys but instead of just talking about this hitch let's show you exactly what it looks like in the process for us while hitching up prior to hooking up to the fifth wheel you're gonna want to make sure this release lever is pulled all the way out and on the very bottom down here you can see that little triangle and when that triangle is on this side it's locked in the open position it's an automatic slider so you don't have to engage any other level levers or anything like that it's extremely simple there's just the one uh, lever on the top that engages the jaw and that will automatically close once we pull the fifth wheel or once we back up into the fifth wheel this is that capture plate that actually makes the sliding hitch work. It's even hard to tell that you have it on here. That's why there's that yellow sticker. And the way that it works is there is this square back here welded onto the capture plate. 
and that locks the uh, kingpin and the hitch together. So that's why I mentioned you don't need that lube because it's, it's not rotating, they're locked together. And what rotates is the head of the hitch. So before we hitch up, we do need to make sure that the fifth wheel is back at hitch height. So for me to do that, I just hit the left and right buttons and that's gonna uh, move this to the hitch height. So it'll pull up the back landing gear and then it'll move the actual uh, height back to when we unhitched. Then I'll lower the tailgate. I'll kind of do a visual and just try to eyeball it, make sure it's pretty lined up and then I'll have her back up the rest of the way. Yeah, this head does pivot here, so you wanna make sure that it's, it's not crooked and it's, it's in the right position. So uh, you can hook up to up to a 10 degree angle being off, but we try to be as, as centered as possible. Okay, go ahead and bring it back. 10 feet or so, keep coming, stop right there. And then I'll do one more visual. You know, you can see that we are pretty lined up. So that is good. And then I'll do another check on the height. You wanna make sure that the fifth wheel height is just about uh, hitting the ramp somewhere in here. So this looks a little high to me. I'm just gonna bring it down just a notch so, so that it hits the ramp and smoothly glides up, which is gonna activate this lever here closed. And then at this point, I'll plug in my seven pin so that our trailer brakes are activated. And I'll wait to put the safety pin in uh, till after we, after we connect here. At this point, you can close the tailgate as well if you want. Uh, our particular truck gets pretty close to the back of the fifth wheel, so I like to uh, to close that. Okay, babe, we're ready to go the last uh, 12 inches, so. And so that right there is an example of uh, just not a very smooth hitch up, so we didn't, con <laughs> we didn't connect it all there. Yeah, you could try going back at this point. You want to do it in one fluid motion, so uh, you could try going back, maybe just a couple inches, or we might have to go forward. Yep. There you go. And that's the, uh, the click you want to hear. It's nice and satisfying. That little triangle I was talking about, you can see is on the other side of that pin there. That's how we know it is nice and locked up. You can also do a visual at this point. Here you can see the jaws. Hopefully that shows up, but you can visually do a visual check, make sure the jaws are closed. And really as far as hitching up, that's it. We'll do our, we'll do a little uh, safety tug test just to make sure that it's hitched up. I'll show you that in a second. Oh, before I forget though, I will of course, put on the safety pin here, uh, the breakaway switch for the trailer brakes. Some people don't like to hitch it on to the hitch itself or the head, just in case something catastrophic were to happen and this whole head or the whole hitch sheared off, you know, there'd be nothing to pull it to. So some people like to hitch that safety pin up to the side of your truck. Um, with the sliding hitch, you just gotta be kinda careful because this, this whole mechanism here moves around, so you wanna be careful with that. Okay, and the way we're gonna do our safety tug test is I'm gonna retract uh, the front landing gear. The one leg will go all the way up, and then the other leg will come off just an inch and then I'll put this leg back down off the ground an inch. So if it were to fall, it would just fall the inch off the ground. Go ahead. Okay. 
And that's really all it takes. You can see that the, uh, the RV moved an inch or so. And if you look at it from the angle up here, we have a Moride rubber pin box. So it has about an inch and a half of movement. And so you can see uh, that move as well, making sure that everything is hooked up and we're ready to go. So the real beauty and benefit of an automatic sliding hitch is that as you turn, it's gonna automatically push this cap of the fifth wheel backwards. So at no point are you gonna get any closer to hitting the front of your cab. And when you have a, a short bed pickup like this and you have a wide eight and a half foot fifth wheel, the corners of these cabs of the fifth wheel can hit the corner cab of your truck. And as you're on different angles, it can even change greater. So for us, we really wanted that peace of mind and not worry about, ever worry about this hitting that. And so the sliding fifth wheel pitch is exactly what is gonna be our ticket. So I'm gonna show you just as we turn, we're gonna just watch this sliding hitch in action as it slides back. You can kind of see in the, uh, the grease there, which I, I have never cleaned this. This is 5,000 miles and three months old. This has not been cleaned. I probably should clean it a little bit more often, but you can see where it kind of slides back eight to 10 inches, which is gonna allow you to not hit your cab. Okay, my wife is gonna turn a little bit in this parking lot and uh, show you a little bit of that hitch in action. Can turn a little sharper. And you can just see how far that's gonna stay away from the back of our truck. Almost hit the GoPro there, but we're still a good 12 inches away from that. And we don't wanna do a 90 degree turn on asphalt here, cause we don't wanna drag our, our rear axles. But if we were on gravel, we would have no problem doing any type of 90 degree turn and not worry about anything happening hitting our truck or fifth wheel. You're doing great. <laughs> She's the professional driver of the family. And again, as she turns, it automatically pushes the fifth wheel back. Giving you 0% chance you're gonna hit your truck in a short bed situation. Now, if you had a eight foot bed, you don't have to worry about this as much, but in the short beds, this is exactly the worry-free design that we want. Now Nick actually came out and met us and did the installation of this hitch himself. And I wanna say it took less than two hours to do it, so it is something that's fairly simple. But I don't wanna share the entire installation process on this, there's plenty of good videos out there for that, so I'll link some down below. But there are a couple of tidbits and juicy pieces that I do wanna share. Nick, how we doing out here? Oh, really good. It's coming right together. You can kind of even barely tell that's on there. Yeah, we, you know, we make it just to where it hugs right around the pin box. It's actually already there. Yeah. Um, goes on pretty simple. And so, like you said, this square here is what locks in the sliding feature. Exactly. So that locks into the opening of the hitch plate. That way, when you turn, the trailer is actually going to turn and rotate the hitch, and that's what creates that automatic slide. That way the corner of the trailer is safe from the cab of the truck. Cool. And that's the goal. That's the goal. So what I want to do is take the brackets that actually bolt onto the side of the hitch and it will tie the super glide to be a direct OE mount for this Ford truck. That way we can put it in and take it out with just these mounting posts. So we'll go ahead and start that process. We make these as transferable as possible. Okay. What I mean by that is this is a, a series that would actually fit on base rails, regular rails in the bed of your truck. Mm. Um, you could fit it into a Chevy puck system. There's ways that we can outfit this into a Ram puck system. Oh wow. We designed that so that the product can be taken, the hitch is gonna last a long time. We're yeah. okay with it being transferred from truck to truck. It's a big purchase. So what we do is install these brackets here 
into these holes that make it kind of a universal fit. Yep. And this will make it a forward puck system. Super okay. Fine. One of the other things that we do with unique on the puck mounted hitches, everybody else is just tying directly to the steel puck. So you have a steel hitch into a steel puck. We use a dissimilar material. It's a brass alloy that actually gets pushed down into the pucks first and it creates a, I don't want to say a cushion, but a, a, a material that prevents any corrosion. That way, if you yes. don't take this out for three or four years, it's still going to come right out. Nice. Plus it allows us to use a cylinder post to create a nice tight fit into the bed. Cause we know that this puck, the puck mounted hitch, as long as it's mounted firmly into the bed, it's going to create a nice toe for you. Do you need help? Uh, no, I think I'm actually pretty good here. If you didn't have this bed liner, I'd say yes. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be able to, that, we love this bed liner. Yeah. The spray and beds were also on like back order. Yep. Believe it or not, the chemicals were, were on back order during COVID, <laughs> so we, we couldn't get our bed sprayed. So I just ended up getting this Husky mat and I really like it. Yeah. Obviously it, it takes up a certain, you know, footprint, but uh, for us, you know, we're not gonna really put a lot in our bed. You know, weight again is our concern. So yep. it's gonna stay empty and being a full-time RVer, we're fine with this being in our bed the entire time. And it, it does take up less physical space in the bed of the truck than a lot of those single point hitches that you were mentioning. Yep. Um, it is a little bit heavier, but because we're tying to the pucks, keep it a nice low profile. I am definitely amazed how quickly this has came together though. It's been about 15 minutes. Yeah, it seems pretty simple. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. And I'm doing the hard part. Why don't you do this? <laughs> it's, uh, you don't ever have to do it again. Yeah. One of the reasons we were scared of going with the sliding fifth wheel hitch is the weight. So Nick, can you just tell me a little bit about the weight? I know I read this is um, like the, one of the lightest fully automatic sliding hitches out there, which is important to us. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, when you're talking sliding hitches, because they do slide, there's an additional mechanism in the hitch. Yeah. Um, it does take additional steel, additional weight to make that happen. So we, we do keep in mind when we're manufacturing and to try to make them as light as possible. That way they can, they, they're not taking a ton of your pin weight. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we do need to have them structurally sound. So they, sure. they do, this does end up weighing 200 pounds plus uh, your side plates are gonna run it up to about 225 pounds. Okay. For a 16,000 pound hitch. But. And then this, the head. Exactly, and that's including the head. Oh, okay. So that does include all of that. Right all here right. is about 100, and, you can take the hitch plate off and then you get it down to about 155 pounds. Okay. All in right here. So all together was 225? About 225. Roughly? Yes, okay, that's not bad. I know some of them are upwards of 300 pounds. Yeah, yes, absolutely. That's very common for a sliding fifth wheel hitch to yeah. be upwards to 300 or even a little higher than that. That's awesome. This is really what, so the automatic slide feature is cool, the US built product's cool, but this is the feature that I like the most about our products. With the rotary latch, Instead, most hitches have like a two-piece clamp that clamps around or a, a bar that slides around or something that kind of hooks. Our jaw actually uses the king pin as the rotation point and wraps 140 degrees around the backside. So as you hook up, it's gonna be important to make sure your trailer's low so that the king pin hits this triggering mechanism. And the only thing that's preventing that jaw from closing is I'm gonna hold this handle out, releases the jaw right as the kingpin's passing and then that jaw wraps around 140 degrees and yeah. cradles the pin. So you don't have any focus wear points. That's the same curve of the pin. Mm -hmm. The pin's just nested right against there so yeah. you're not getting the bumping and chucking that you do with some of the basic slide bars. Every other hitch out there on the market requires you to climb over the bedside and put a pin down through this handle oh. to lock it shut. Ours, you don't have to do it self locking. So That's once that nice. handle goes in, it locks. So you don't have, to, all you have to do is reach over the bedside and make sure that handle goes all the way in. All right, here we are, final steps. Nick's gonna go over a little bit of the maintenance. Yep, so what we're going to use for maintenance is just some original recipe WD 40. We don't want any of the, uh, uh, no silicones, no um, Teflon, Teflon, dry lube. Nothing like that, exactly. We wanna use a good wet lubrication because we do have some plastics already integrated into the hitch. 
So uh, what we need to do is just coat these top and inward facing surfaces with WD-40. So we'll coat a little bit on here. And then it's something that's good to do occasionally is they give you this little straw with the WD-40 cans. You can see that little oh. vertical split right there. Yep. Spray into the top of that and you'll see it just kind of start flushing out. Um, obviously this hitch is brand new. There's nothing built up in there, but as you start you know, going off boondocking on the back roads, uh, dirt's gonna wanna get in there. This is going to help uh, rinse all of that out. Also, before you hook up, it's a good idea to spray a little on this top plate. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the pin box to slide up on top of that hitch plate. It's just going to make it easier to hook up okay. without giving you any difficulties. What about those dry plastic Teflon rings that people use? Is yes, that great question. So there's there are people that use those white nylon discs. They prevent any uh, surface you know wear on there when the trailer's rotating. With the Super Glide, because we installed the capture plate that has the wedge on it, we don't have to worry about that rotation. So we actually don't want to use one of those plastic mm. discs here. Okay. The only thing we're using the WD or the oil for is just to help that hooking up process. Um, if you didn't put any on there, it's just going to give you some more difficulties when you're hooking up. Okay. And how often do we uh, spray in the crack down there? So we recommend the tubes and this whole area, we say every day of travel. Okay. Um, the reality is, is that is definitely overkill. But if you're doing it, it's going to prevent the hitch from wearing out. Uh, if that's not lubricated and it's having difficulty sliding, um, it's going to uh, uh, create additional wear on the hitch and it's going to start wearing it out sooner. As far as flushing this vertical crack, yeah. uh, definitely before the season starts, you want to give that a good rinse. Okay. Um, that's not necessarily an everyday thing. Okay. And then the last thing is that uh, head bolt, correct? Yep, so the pivot bolt right here, you can see there's a lot of grease on there. We grease them up well at the factory. So that's going to get you at least a year. We do recommend removing that, putting some fresh grease on it, and then reinserting it annually. Um, but again, that should definitely last you at least that first year without any issues. Perfect. Nick, are we in good hands with you? Absolutely, I'll guide you guys perfectly. That way you feel comfortable after this. That's good. Nick's already been calming my nerves down because they are starting to rise a little bit. But nobody be too concerned if it doesn't hook up because we are off a little bit, so don't forget to cut your wheel. How much should I cut it, a full turn? About, about like that. Okay, you ready? Yep. Go ahead and give, give, give it a little bit of gas, yep. A little bit more. So you see, when you review that video, you'll see why I say one fluid motion. Yeah. There was a spot there where it certainly felt like it was done, but when you have that rubber cushioning there, you get that cushion action, but you heard the, yeah. the clip, right? So now go ahead and hop out of your truck, make sure it's in park. Oh. That was actually pretty smooth. Not, right? too, not too bad. Well, I know that one of my flaws is the brakes and the gas on this can be a little jumpy. Yes. So I know that one smooth motion was going to be a challenge for me. I knew that as soon as you said it. And your 1,050 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So Nick has a YouTube channel that he does in his free time. It's called Nick the Hitch Guy, and that's actually where I first ran across from him. And the video was called the Polarite Super Glide versus the Anderson Ultimate. Because the Anderson Ultimate was one of those hitches that I was considering just because of the weight. And when I brought that up to more and more people, I kind of got that look on the face and they kind of cringed a little bit. So I feel like the Anderson Ultimate, and Nick did a great job explaining in the video the differences between the two without even really, um, you know, pushing more towards Polarite. He actually did a great job of just explaining how the Anderson works. We also want to share this one big tip while unhitching that we actually learned while watching videos before we even got this whole setup. And I will say it's probably saved us a ton of headache because it's a very simple thing and it will help you unhitch quickly. One of the biggest things when trying to unhitch is 99% of the time the trailer and the hitch are kind of bound up together, the jaw is. So you need to release the pressure off of this to be able to open this lever and we just do that by backing up just a hair okay, yep 
that was just a, that was just enough you saw it barely moved but it was enough to open the handle up and you can see the triangle is on this side Okay, I wanted to share some of the other options we were looking at while trying to research a fifth wheel hitch for our truck. As I mentioned earlier, we have a 21 Ford full four door crew cab with the shorter six and three quarter foot bed. And being really new to fifth wheels, it took me a long time to kind of learn, you know, the differences between the hitches, the styles, and also the differences in the lengths of bed. Now, because we didn't have that eight foot bed, I was pretty concerned about the fifth wheel hitting the truck. We travel full time and we go to a lot of new places. So there's gonna be some instances where, you know, we just don't know that exact turn. And that kind of was the big struggle for me. It was wanting that sliding hitch, but also wanting the light weight and so that kind of comes up to the first real competitor that I was seriously looking at. And that was the Anderson Ultimate fifth wheel hitch. Now this thing's pretty common out there. It seems like a lot of people use it. And I think the biggest benefit of it is that it's lightweight. The aluminum version is like 35 pounds and the steel version is around 40 pounds. So that's pretty light for a fifth wheel hitch setup. It's kind of hard to get lighter than that. Although there are uh, other brands out there that have lightweight options as well. And with our travel trailer, we had the Anderson weight distribution hitch. So I was kind of already familiar with the brand. I liked uh, the company, the quality and all that. So it was definitely something I was looking at. I kind of liked how it had a ball and funnel on top so that it was kind of like hooking up to a travel trailer. It felt very comfortable, or at least I thought it would if we did go that route. So I liked the ability to be able to hitch up from any angle, and I thought that would help a lot while we're out boondocking. Uh, but I did learn that one of the downsides of having that ball uh, and coming over the top is you do need to raise your fifth wheel, sometimes pretty high. And if you're on uneven ground, um, it could be kind of a pain to hitch up and have your fifth wheel extended really high to get over the top of the ball. Another thing I didn't really like is if you Google Anderson Ultimate Hitch Failure, you'll see a lot of different stories about these hitches actually failing or buckling, crumpling underneath the weight. I think most of it happened when people would stop suddenly, so maybe in an emergency stop, uh, that puts a lot of force of a big fifth wheel over top. and. You know, the weight of our fifth wheel was gonna be around 15,000 pounds. And I think if we had a lighter fifth wheel, I wouldn't be as concerned, you know, maybe 10, 12,000 pounds, something like that. Now, of course, stories on the internet can just be stories, but before we were even thinking about getting a fifth wheel, we actually ran into someone that had their Anderson fifth wheel hitch fail. And it actually ended up crumpling and their fifth wheel dropped and they had like a, a cooler underneath it that was like the only thing that kind of protected their bed from getting crushed by their fifth wheel. So firsthand, I know that the failures are a possibility. I'm not saying that all of them are gonna fail because I feel like Anderson is a good company and we really enjoyed the weight distribution hitch that we had on our travel trailer. But the very biggest reason that I did not go with the Anderson Ultimate Hitch was because there's no guarantee that your fifth wheel and your truck bed are not gonna hit. It's not a sliding hitch, it is still fixed, and so I would have no way to know how fully I could turn until actually purchasing and doing the whole setup and actually testing with my own truck and my own fifth wheel combination and doing to see how far we could turn. There's tons of videos out there. People can turn uh, fairly far with their, their combination, but again, you don't know if your fifth wheel is wider, the front cap design matters, your truck manufacturer and style matters, all that is variables, and you really don't know until you actually try it yourself. So with no guarantee on that, I had to uh, exit from the list. So with that said, I was starting to look more at the sliding hitches, but with sliding hitches, you have the automatic sliding hitch and you have the manual sliding hitch. 
And the benefit of the manual sliding hitch is they are much lighter and less complex than the auto sliding hitch. But there was one story that I read that made me decide not to go with a manual sliding hitch. And that was a guy who was turning in to a campground from the road, I think it was a highway, and it just happened to be at a pretty sharp angle, and uh, I think it even angled down a little bit, and he ended up connecting with his uh, truck bed and his fifth wheel because he couldn't stop in the middle of the busy road and manually select it. So you always had to like think, because they're not automatic, you have to physically stop, hit another lever, and then your truck and trailer would be in sliding mode. Then of course, the newer, more kind of uh, upcoming popular thing is like something, the Gen Y hitch, or something like the Reese Goose Box. And I can definitely see the benefits of going this route for a lot of people, because the biggest thing is you get full access to your bed, because the kingpin box is now a gooseneck and you're just using a ball in the bed, which that gives you full access to your bed once you remove the center ball out of it. And I do get that that's gonna make a lot of sense for a lot of people because you need access to your bed and if you're just towing a handful of times a year, that makes sense. Now with us being full time, we're not ever gonna really need to take our hitch in and out of our truck bed. To, to use it. So that's not something that really concerned me. And again, the biggest thing that was I kept coming back to, my main criteria is I wanted to make sure no matter where we went, no matter how we kind of traveled, that I'm not going to have the RV hit the truck bed. So while again, there are stories of uh, people being able to turn almost 90 degrees or quite close to 90 degrees with uh, this style, um, there's still no guarantee that it would actually work that way. Again, that's what kept pushing us back to the auto slider is getting that guarantee with wherever we go, however we travel, that we're not gonna hit our two together. Feel free to leave the style that you went with or that you're thinking of going with and maybe the reasons why. People love to read the comments and we're all here to kind of learn. There is no right perfect hitch for every single person or scenario so I think there are many different ones that are gonna fit different people so there are definitely some considerations I hope this video helped you think through some of them and maybe to see if this would be a right solution for you I'll link our hitch and some of the other pull right hitches down below if you want to check them out as well as Nick the hitch guys contact information if you have any real specific questions you want to get to them I appreciate everybody watching and we'll see you on the next video